I wanted to fight. Right. <laughs> when, when I finally saw it as a means to uh, support me, uh, mm -hmm. it was at Westwood Schools where they uh, asked me to become a teacher full time. Mm -hmm. They asked me what I, w I was making when I was working full time. And <laughs> I'm getting paid the same anyway, but same. I get to do something that I absolutely yeah. love. Like my primary focus was just teaching people how to defend themselves, mm -hmm. building confidence. Mm -hmm. And they, it wasn't a competitive school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I think maybe 2002 or 2003 mm -hmm. they started to incorporate boxing, mm -hmm. which is far more modern than what everyone was accustomed to. Since we were starting to incorporate boxing into the school, mm -hmm. and as a teacher, mm -hmm. I had to know what I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. I, I like the whole atmosphere of competing. And since it was all brand new to me, um, and, and especially since there's so much contact involved, mm -hmm. um, I, I started to quickly understand that there's, uh, that there's technique behind it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, it was just weird because as much as I, I would get punished in the ring, mm -hmm. um, there was always something to improve on. And mm -hmm. Or I, I understood something and something else would come up and it always became this evolution of being able to fi figure out this whole system. Mm -hmm. the, the type of people I, I associate myself with are people with the same type of lifestyle I have, mm -hmm. where it's real busy, um, I probably will see them maybe once a quarter. Mm -hmm. Eric Spolster is one of my good friends, uh, Stephen Curry from the, uh, from the Warriors. So I, I, I associate a lot with the different professional athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, with a lot of different boxers down wall card and all over um, um, the Philippines and up here mm -hmm. in Northern California, just just people with the same interests that I do. Um, I'm not the type where I would just hang out for hours and hours and hours and just kind of kill time. If if I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs, it'll drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to do something, and it has to feel like it's productive. Mm -hmm. In boxing, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think the, uh, the level of nutrition and the, the science of physical fitness has mm -hmm. greatly increased over the past 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. That you have boxers now, both male and female, who are world champions in the age of the late 30s, mm -hmm. early 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, also depending on what type of style that they have, mm -hmm. what kind of technique they have, um, greatly depends on their longevity mm -hmm. in the sport. Mm -hmm. But my, my, my parents were worried you know, mm -hmm. about me even getting involved in boxing mm -hmm. at first. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, well, what, what I'm real thankful for is that they never told me to quit. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they allow me to make my own decisions mm -hmm. and I have to be mature enough to live by whatever I choose. Mm -hmm. Well, But they would always push the whole you should go back to school. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back to school, I'll support you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do this. No pressure, huh? Yeah. Great parents. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so hold on. What else? Sexism. How, how did it manifest itself? Um, just not. It, 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 it's always a battle to try to get the opportunity mm -hmm. to excel in the sport. And I think this goes both ways for both male and female. Mm -hmm. In order for anyone to know who you are, you gotta tell them who you are. Mm -hmm. And to get there, it's all about being able to get the exposure, getting the opportunity to have that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of promoters, a lot of people in the sport, what, what, and they, they can also be trainers too. Because mm -hmm. I remember going into all these tournaments and being the only Filipina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that goes for both male and female. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I, know, I know that there's layers upon layers. Mm -hmm. Um, because they had a big problem with saying my name, mm -hmm. and I figured this is the, the amateur program is all about being able to sell, um, build confidence within the community. Mm -hmm. And if they took the time to say the name correctly for a guy, they should do it as well for a, for a female. Mm -hmm. And 
as much as we would tell them my last name, even though it starts with a J, they'd mm -hmm. always mispronounce it. It sounds like an H, sounds like an H, and we came like with the moniker. What is it? Uh, Hulatin. I, I thought it was a, a means to unite uh, the community, okay. especially with the youth, um, to build confidence within the, uh, the sport athletes, especially if they have goals in the uh, professional fields of sports. And uh, some, some organizations did, and a lot didn't, um, especially for, for women boxers. Uh, back when I, when I started, around here in the Bay Area, um, there wasn't a lot of females in the gym. Mm -hmm training, nevertheless going to competitions, mm -hmm. uh, versus now, it's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. you, usually in boxing, they have this whole idea of where you want to build a fighter up, uh -huh. um, have them get used to the amount of rounds that they uh -huh. fight in, and also with the level of opposition that they have. Mm -hmm. So it should go at, you know, if, if, if a boxer happens to be promoted by uh, and invested by a certain uh, backer, uh, you want to be able to protect that investment, so to mm -hmm. speak. And uh, you take these baby steps to have this fighter built up to have an amazing big fight where mm -hmm. everyone would want to watch. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was always so I almost was thrown in to the wolves right away. Mm -hmm. Try to fight girls who are more experienced than mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. Sometimes bigger uh, because it would be hard for me to find a, mm -hmm. an opponent. Mm -hmm. um, so by the time 2008 rolled around, uh, I went up, which is, it, it was only had been one year and passed since I turned professional, uh, I, I suffered my first loss of the score of title fight. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a split decision loss, uh, I learned a lot, mm -hmm. uh, the girl was bigger than me, more experienced and, mm -hmm. so, and so forth, but uh, I went through that, had a knee injury. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tried to get my black belt, blew out my knee, had uh, surgery. Mm -hmm. um, was debating whether or not I wanted to go back into boxing or not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Freddie Roach, he still gives a lot of credit to his trainer, which I don't hear a lot of trainers do nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, and his trainer was Eddie Futch. Mm -hmm. uh, so he still shows that respect. Um, but obviously in boxing it's also a business, mm -hmm. so it, it, with some people they have different... Some people they uh, they hold a grudge, some people they have dinner afterwards, mm -hmm. um, and some people just go into their room, mm -hmm. <laughs> some people celebrate, it depends what on the individual. Um, I usually just go out and eat mm -hmm. with my team. I know that in order for me to do well in the sport I can't really take like lots of long breaks. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to find a piece of that every day, actually, because okay. this is almost like a, a, a marathon. This whole boxing trip. <laughs> it's a marathon. Yeah. Um, because you have to be ready for any opportunity. Uh huh. Um, it's not like a job right. where you clock in and clock out and everything's right. set and standard. Um, you have to go with the flow of everything. Mm -hmm. If I've seen a lot of different fighters who has gotten opportunities that were good and sometimes not so good and you could just all, it all reflected on the management team mm -hmm. and you could just see the type of relationship that a lot of boxers would have with their management team and it's business first before anything else like they, they sometimes when money when he talks they would rather see a person get hurt mm -hmm. uh, and take the cash mm -hmm. versus preserving someone's whole mental health physical state which is what you Which get is from what me. I feel I get from. Well, it, it's a composite of my entire team, though. Mm -hmm. My entire team, um, my martial arts school, mm -hmm. my family. Boxing is just like life. Um, you always have a choice. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you, you gotta live by that choice. So if someone were engaging into violence, uh, again, with my martial arts background, I always tell and preach to my students that you can always prevent things from happening and mm -hmm. it, it, it's something that you can prevent not just when it's as it's happening but layers and layers you know time before it even gets into that position mm -hmm. it's all about positioning is always being able to think ahead 
Um, so in boxing, it's the same thing. You got to think ahead right before you go into a fight. Mm -hmm. You got to prepare for it um, for any circumstances, whether it's uh, rape or uh, domestic abuse um, or even verbal abuse, whether it's in school or at work or at, um, in anywhere. Um, it's something that you constantly have an active role. To, you have the power to choose what you want with that. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people who come to the martial arts school, they want to defend against domestic violence and things like that, even verbal um, mm -hmm. abuse. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there, there are ways to prevent that. Mm -hmm. uh, just like in the ring, there's ways to move away or avoid getting punches in the face, getting punches in the body. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of hard work. <laughs> it does. A lot of willpower. Um, it, it can be hard when you have your spouse and uh, they end up, you end up um, experiencing domestic abuse with that person. You love that person, but at the same time, it can be very hurtful and very abusive. You still have that choice, and uh, you gotta know how to separate um, emotion versus um, logic. Mm -hmm. Just like in boxing, if you get mad in the ring, you can tie yourself out, mm -hmm. get yourself hurt. You won't follow the game plan, um, and you get punished for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so at the end of the day, I feel like everything that we do, it's, it's, it's by choice. For me, getting into boxing, I just want to be able to showcase that and show that, yeah, it, it, I did choose this, but there's a reason why. Um, I, I felt like I wasn't a ever able to be a main event fighter that's going to be showcased live on TV. This fight's extremely important in the sense where um, I can either have my first American debut uh, as a female fighter. And that's going to be backed by American promoters. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a lot of hard work mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it took a lot of belief, mm -hmm. a lot of struggle over the past couple of years, but it, it was something that I, I wanted to show a case where we were able to attack from outside of the U.S. Now we've made such a ruckus outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. that the U.S. is saying, oh my goodness, what's happening? Mm -hmm. This is a whole different market we didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. And now that we're starting to shift minds, then all of a sudden we can pro possibly have this whole big opportunity mm -hmm. for a lot of the female athletes. <coughs> uh, I, I know with my parents, my my dad probably says it the best. He says, um, I'm, I'm probably too headstrong. Mm -hmm. um, and he, 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 he feels like I'm the type of person that's going to do what I want anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and he says that could be my greatest strength and also my greatest weakness. Mm -hmm. So obviously he comes out and he advises me on certain mm -hmm. things sometimes. Um, but, um, and I think because they saw that they let the natural process of having me grow up and make my own decisions, just kind of let me just do what I want to mm -hmm. do because I'm going to be that way anyway. Mm -hmm. Versus sitting here and having arguments with them mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? So we, we got along all pretty mm -hmm. well. One thing I, I really appreciate about my promoter is uh, he, he's starting to break the barrier with having me as a female um, headline on a lot of his fights and having shown on TV and stuff like that and uh, um, he's already setting me up with a job outside of it where I can start commentating. I, I just want to be able to save up all my money first and, uh, and I, I do generally just want to help out like obviously my relatives and stuff like that but I'm, I'm looking into just seeing what I can do is to support like foundations and charities and stuff like that. For my fight to happen on the same week as the 25th anniversary of the uh, People Power Movement. I feel like as a Filipina, a Filipino American, um, I feel like I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by a lot of other Filipinos who always constantly think about their past and is always aware of everything else that happens out there. And so what they like, well, what I've noticed so far is that everything that we tend to do, it tends to outreach and somehow touches and connects with someone else to bring everything else into a positive light. And uh, with this fight coming up, uh, I want to go out there and make sure that I represent well and I show a really good fight uh, for everyone out there, especially for the uh, Filipino community who's backed me since the beginning. Um, I definitely feel like I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for that. Um, uh, it's it endearing for me because uh, as a female in a male-dominated sport, uh, there was a lot of opportunities that I didn't have. Uh, I wanted to go to the Olympics back in 2008 and didn't have that female division for boxers back then uh, versus now they do. 
Um, but even then, uh, the Filipino community has done wonders and always, always just been there to, to support me and back me with this. So, uh, you know, I feel like everything is all happening um, and is mending beautifully. The fight uh, is coming up in a couple of weeks. It's on February 25th at the Point Richmond uh, at the Craneway Pavilion. Uh, you get your tickets at thehurricanereturns.com. It's a great, it's a big fight because it's my first world title defense. I ended up winning my first world title out here in the Bay Area, so it's nice to not only win a title, but also being able to uh, defend it in front of um, everyone out here. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. It's going to be a hard fight. It's going to be a tough fight. Uh, my opponent, her name is Francesca, the chosen one, no counter. Uh, she's naturally bigger, uh, supposed to be stronger than me. She fights at 130, 126. I fight at 122. And uh, on February 25th, she wants to go out there and take my belt. And I'm going to be over there, and I'm going to stop her from doing it. So hope to see everyone out there. And uh, I've been training really hard, and I'm really excited.